Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel or welcome if you're new. In today's video, I am going to be sharing a dream job update. So as many of you know, at the beginning of the year, I took on a new job. So I left my job of over six years, which I can still say to this day was my favorite job to take a job or to work in public education with kiddos. So if you would have asked me 10 years ago what I would foresee my social work career taking me or what I would like to see happen, I would have said I would like to work with students. So still kind of up in the air regarding what students, like currently I'm working with, you know, elementary, middle, high school, but I do not have any reservations towards possibly working with higher education students. So the reason why I took this job is because I felt as though if I didn't take it now or switch jobs now that I maybe never would have, I don't think that I would have been okay with not at least doing something or trying out something that I always long to do. So that's kind of why we're here. There are there were there were no other major factors into me taking this job other than it's something that I've always thought and dreamt of doing. One thing that you should know is that I'm actually not a career girly. While I do hold a master's degree and I graduated high school with honors and undergrad with honors and grad school with honors, I've actually never really been super career focused. I've always enjoyed helping people, hence my degrees, and I've always known that basically, you know, I kind of just wanted to land a job that would meet my needs and that I would halfway like and then I would be good to go. So I'm not out here trying to climb any corporate ladder. I honestly have no further career goals technically. And so the only other go the only goal that I've actually ever had is a certain salary requirement, but I've already met that salary requirement. So I'm kind of just out here, which is another reason why I decided to go for the job. It met the salary requirements. It was working in education, still working in the helping profession. So I thought, why not? I've already mentioned in previous videos what requirements or certifications and stuff that one needed to work this job. But basically, it's a unique type of job. It is a clinical position in a way, but I'm not quite a school psychologist, a school counselor, a school mental health counselor or, you know, anything like that. School social worker, I'm not even quite a school social worker, but it is a certain type of clinical job and you do need to have a clinical license to do the job. However, I'll say this until the end of time, I do feel like, you know, having someone with a an advanced degree and licensure is good. That means that they probably are gonna do the job really well. However, I do feel like in ways it's more like an entry level job, although not on paper whatsoever. Anyway, started this job in January. Off the rip, I already knew that it was going to be something that I didn't love. That still, I mean, that held to be true. It still holds to be true, but I'm here to provide an update because I don't know that I've provided an update since I've returned from summer break. I think I did an update maybe like at the end of summer break, but I don't think I've done one since we've been back into school or back at school. So. Essentially, I started the job second semester of the 2021-2022 school year. And so now I'm here at the first semester of the 2022-2023 school year. I still feel the exact same way. Um, that is that when I first started, I felt like I was kind of thrown in. And I don't feel like I received any training regarding how education works because education is vastly different than a lot of other sectors out there. So I don't need training on how to connect with my students, although I have been getting trainings on that and working with students who've experienced trauma and all that. So I love that, although I've already gotten lots of training on that already. It's kind of like refreshers at this point, and I probably could even go without the trainings, but it is helpful to sit in a room with people who do a similar job to me and kind of learn from them and hear about their experiences and their expertise and, and skills and instruments and interventions that they use. However, that's not the area where I, I will ever need training. I got that sewed up. I've been doing that for a long time. I just needed and have needed education regarding, well, education regarding education, specifically special education or SPED trainings and stuff like that. That's where I kind of get lost when we're talking about policies and laws and this and that. That's where I'm like, my head is spinning because that's all that a lot of, you know, that's kind of a part of working in education. And since I'd never worked in education, I didn't really know about any of that stuff. So 
Um, I do feel like at the beginning I didn't receive a lot of training specifically regarding policies and stuff like that. Still the same way. Um, even like if there's a fire drill right now, I still don't even really know what to do. I'm just, this is just one example, but different drills and things like that. I don't really know a lot of the, a lot of the rules and regulations because no one's training me on this. I learn from asking, but you know, even since I started this job in January, I think there have been four changes in supervisors for me. So I don't know. I'm just really out here winging it. <laughs> I've decided that I just am going to have to convince myself that I'm doing a good job and measure that by how my students are doing and how they're responding, especially in sessions. And that's just going to have to be enough because otherwise I don't really know if I'm doing a good job. No one ever tells me I don't, you know, no one's ever shadowed me or sat in a, in a meeting with me or any of those types of things. And I think that was probably what was new to me. I think maybe a couple days into the, into the job, I had a meeting and I don't know, I just felt like that would have been a good opportunity for someone who knew what they were doing or a supervisor of mine to kind of sit in that meeting and help me to navigate it. Because otherwise I just was sitting in there looking crazy, which is what I did. So shout out to the other ladies who do this job because I get all of my questions answered from them. And I will say, I've never had a clinical supervisor, so nobody's there to supervise me clinically. So, because they're expecting me to do it because I have a license, which is all fine and good, but I've always had a license and I've still always had a clinical supervisor. So when I do get some supervision, if you will, is really about more like the educational piece rather than the clinical piece, which if you ask me, they both, they kind of need to go hand in hand and both be on point to move these students to where we need them to be. I work with some of the students who have the biggest struggles, who are the most, um, who lack self-regulation strategies and coping strategies and those types of things. So I feel like we got to be on point as the service providers. But, you know, those are just my thoughts. I also at the beginning, when I first started, definitely struggled with a sense of belonging because I say this all the time let's say I'm at a high school with 2,500 people in that whole entire school I cannot look to the left right front back anywhere and find a person who does my job why because there are only five of us and we work in different zones so I go months without seeing my coworkers or hearing from them or whatever so it's very weird to just be in a space where if you look in any direction there's no one who does the same job as you. Even my supervisors have not done the same job as me or don't do the same job as me. So it's very weird in that aspect. Similarly to the belonging thing, I don't feel really connected and that can be a lot of, for a lot of different reasons. But in the beginning, I definitely didn't feel connected. Now I feel more connected, but I'll never feel as connected to this job as I have to any other job that I've ever worked because I've worked for nonprofits and you know those types of things in there we just operate completely differently than the education system which is to be expected so in my sharing my updates it's just me sharing I feel like this is how the public school system works that's just that I mean there are what like I mean I would go to work at my previous job let's say and there might be 30 staff members and we all are talking and collaborating throughout the day with the same goal and mission in mind. We are all following the same policies and procedures and all of that. However, with the public school system, again, I could walk into a building and there might be 300 staff members. You know what I'm saying? So there's, I'm never even going to, it's just weird to me to not know every staff member, to not at least be cordial with them. I mean, I'm having an event this weekend and I'm inviting my previous supervisor, my previous coworkers. I still go and go to lunch with them and go to other outings and stuff with them. It was just like a closer knit type of thing. Previous job, same thing, previous job, same thing, previous job, we used to have slumber parties. Like that's how close we were. So I'll, it'll always take some getting used to this type of large, I mean, it's huge. And it's not just my district where you know the public education system is everywhere so it's tons and tons of different systems and it's a lot so that part will always be new to me and I'm sure something I will never ever get used to but essentially all in all those I feel like were my those have been my largest struggles they're kind of like the helicopter struggles those are the things that are always you know 
uh, flying above my head, if you will. I'm all about prevention and even restoration, and that's just just gonna be that. That's just all that I know. That's all that I believe in, if I'm being honest. So, because there isn't a lot of that in the public school system or in my district, I guess it it just doesn't align with what I believe in too much. You know what I'm saying? So, I don't know. It's a lot. <laughs> I say this all the time. There are probably like 200 yellow flags and maybe like 10 red flags and a few green flags. And if I'm here to report on the green flags, the things that I love is working one-on-one -on -one with my students. Absolutely love it. In fact, if all I did is go to work and meet one-on-one -on -one with my students, then that would probably fill my bucket. Love that green flag. I love, so not only just meeting one-on-one -on -one with clients, I love working with children just in general, so that's a green flag. And I also like the schedule and how, you know, everybody's pretty much gone from any school by 3.30 at the latest, you know what I'm saying? As opposed to working my nine to five or some of my other schedules that I've worked or shifts. So I do love that, but those are kind of like the primary and only, really the only green flags. Everything else falls in the yellow and the red. So on a scale, of one to ten, one being hate the job, ten being love the job. When I first started the first week, first couple weeks, I probably was at a strong three. A couple months later, three and a half, four. At the end of the previous school year, May, June, around there, I would, would say I was probably at coasting at like a three and a half, four. And now being back from summer break and all of that, I'm probably at, I will say, a five maybe like four and a half to five because I do feel like it's tolerable. I feel like I do have enough knowledge and skills that I could maybe ride this thing out for a longer amount of time. I strongly feel that way. So I do feel like I'm at like a five. I've been going on lunch dates with one of my coworkers, one of the ladies who does the same job as me. So we go on lunch dates and we we're able to kind of connect and talk about things. Cause you know, otherwise I don't, I can't talk about my job and how I can get better at it or what I'm doing bad at it or what I'm doing good at it or anything like that to anyone else but them because they're the only ones who work the job. But again, we work in different zones across the whole district so I don't even see them that regularly. Do I have plans of working this job long term? The answer is still no. Do I love the job? The answer is still no. I think people get stressed about when you say you don't work, you don't like your job or care for your job when you work with kids because I think people just automatically assume that maybe you're treating the kids poorly or something like that but the reality my reality is that my kids would never know anything about if I love the job or don't because the version of me that they get is the greatest version that anybody will ever get meaning that my current clients my current students are getting the best version of me as a clinician that anyone else has gotten before me. So over the past 10 plus years that I've been practicing, no other student or client has gotten this version of me. I'm the most trained, the most clinical, the most knowledgeable, the most educated that I'll ever be. Like in this very moment, I'm the best that I can be or the best that I will be in, in this very moment. Of course, I can go on and, and learn more and get more educated and more knowledgeable and all of that. But currently in this moment, I'm the best version of a clinician that anyone of my clients, anyone that I've ever worked with has ever seen. So they get the best version of me. I show up daily for them. I love it. Love, 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 love it. I strongly believe that every adult has to play a role in the lives of children because these children are our future. So it's all of our jobs. Every single adult that comes in contact with a child is our jobs to instill in them the skills that they need. And you can do that without stepping on toes or acting like a parent or whatever the case is. It's our job to instill confidence and self-esteem and self-worth and knowledge and wisdom. I truly believe that. And so that's really what compels me to even do this job because I know that I do a good job at it. I have a great relationship with 99% of my students and working one-on-one -on -one with my kids is something that is not gonna be getting any complaints from me because I love it and I love the students that I work with and the relationships that we have created and we do some really good work. We do mindfulness activities. We do lots of 
CBT, we do everything. I could go on and on and on about what we do together and it's a lot of good work. The only issue is I don't meet with my students for that long. It's not a traditional therapy. It's basically like mini therapy, if you will. I'm only meeting with my students for maybe 20 minutes, some 15 minutes per week. This is per week, some 30 minutes per week. I don't meet with anyone. No one has my service longer than 30 minutes. That's because I'm, if I haven't mentioned this before, I'm a related service provider. So I actually do related services and I don't actually dictate what the student needs. I just step in and I relate to the service and the goal that they have that's created by their team lead or their case manager. So if I haven't mentioned that already, there are parameters about around that. But I don't meet with students that long and I'm only meeting once a week and these kids are typically ones who need more than just 20 minutes a week of behavior modification more this more that more practicing of self-regulation skills more all of that than just what i can provide which is one of the things that makes the job a little bit difficult but yeah that is my dream job update just wanted to share with you guys where i'm at so i can confidently say and i'm happily saying that i am at a better place than what I was, but I'm still not, if, here's the bottom line, the bottom line is there hasn't been a day that has passed since maybe February, March, that I haven't been looking for jobs, applying for jobs, and even interviewing for jobs. Now, interestingly enough, I wanna leave you guys with this. I keep looking for jobs. There are a decent amount that pop up. A lot of them I'm not interested in currently. Like, I don't think I'm ready to for medical social work or I don't really care for, you know, doing therapy out of somebody's office or, you know, I'm not at that level. I don't want to be there. I don't know where I want to be exactly, but that's not where I want to be. So basically the jobs that have been opening up, I haven't really cared for whatsoever i mean there have been some that i've applied for and interviewed for but majority of them are ones that i'm not that interested in and you know i have a lot of stipulations i'm not doing anybody's on call i'm not <laughs> taking any old salary i'm not working anybody's night shift or whatever i have a lot of regulations around that and so that's the that's the bed that I make and I'm prepared to lie in it like every bed that I make every single bed that I make I am prepared to lie in it so I know that having all these stipulations around what work I will do limits my job search but it's okay I'm okay with it because I've had stipulations this whole time and I've still thoroughly enjoyed the work that I do at every single job so I'll be okay plus you know I think jobs you go to them you get some money so you can pay your bills. That sounds like a horrible way to put it, but if you go to a job and you actually like it, that's great. But I don't think that everyone is gonna be out here head over heels about their jobs. Some people just work jobs because they don't want to not have their lights on or they don't wanna go without food. That's just how the cookie crumbles. We don't live in a perfect world, so we can't just have perfect jobs and live in this fantasy land and everything be rainbows and unicorns. Anyway. I just wanted to provide a dream job update just to share that I am progressing along the scale, if you will. However, I still have no plans of this being a long-term job. It's nothing against anybody specifically or whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like I'm not here to be trying to put folks down and whatnot. It's just, I knew early on that it wasn't for me, but I'm willing to give everything a fair chance. That is very important to me, to give everyone and everything a fair chance and I feel like I've done that especially if I finish this school year I for sure will have given this a very fair chance that is my dream job update if you like this video give it a like subscribe if you're new and if you're liking what you're seeing if you have any questions comments concerns leave them down below in the comment section and I will catch you guys right back here in a few days in a brand new video bye guys